This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin getting stolen from hot wallets. Now, hot wallet is just a Bitcoin wallet that at some time in the past has touched the internet or is touching the internet or might someday touch the internet. So it's being held on a device like a laptop or a desktop or a smartphone. Whereas a cold wallet is an example of cold storage. It's a wallet that hasn't and will never touch the internet. It's important to never ever use a hot wallet for an amount of Bitcoin that's larger than what you might car carry around in cash in a physical wallet or a purse. So that's maybe in for the average American, call it $100, maybe even $200, though people are carrying less and less cash these days. Now, what makes hot wallets dangerous? The problem is the private keys that are stored inside may leak to the internet and allow an attacker to sign a transaction to move your Bitcoin, in other words, to steal it. And this is not just a theoretical thing. This happens all the time to people, as Nick Newman reports here. Last night, got a text about someone who moved a bunch of Bitcoin from an exchange to a desktop wallet. So this would be an example of a hot wallet. It's a Bitcoin wallet that's sitting on a desktop computer. The computer immediately locked Bitcoin stolen from the wallet, had malware waiting for a deposit. Single key self-custody on a general purpose computer or phone is not a good idea. And I would agree with that, especially it's not a good idea for larger amounts, more than say $100 worth of Bitcoin. When it comes to Bitcoin, it's important to assume that your desktop, your laptop, your smartphone, already contain malware like keyloggers, various viruses, worms, ransomware, trojans, and other spyware. And that's why it's important never ever enter a cold wallet seed, your 12 or 24 words into any laptop or desktop. Once you've done that, you must consider the wallet to have become, to have been transformed from a cold wallet to a hot wallet because it has now had exposure to the internet. And if there are large amounts of Bitcoin in there, they should be moved immediately to a new wallet. Your cold wallet seed should only be entered into another hardware wallet. For example, if your hardware wallet dies and you need to recover it or reconstitute it by entering your seed into a new hardware wallet. Hardware wallets really remain the best form of cold storage for the average person and the best way to keep your Bitcoin seed and private keys off of the internet. Hardware wallets are used for two main things. They're used to generate your seed, which controls all of your Bitcoin and all the different Bitcoin addresses, and also to sign Bitcoin transactions safely offline when you want to send some Bitcoin from one of those addresses. My favorite hardware wallet remains the cold card. I love the cold card Q, which has a little bit bigger screen and has this great keyboard. And I also love the cold card Mark IV because it's very portable. It's much smaller and can fit in your pocket more comfortably. The price point for these, and I'm not being paid in any way or compensated by CoinKite or anyone to promote these. The cold card Q is about $249. Cold card Mark IV is about $177. I also recommend the Blockstream Jade. I like the Jade Classic because of the price point at $79. Once you get up to the Jade Plus, which is also a great device, at $149, in my opinion, at that point, you should probably just spring for the, for the cold card Mark IV if you can. But these are both good companies, good devices, and they're much easier to use than you might think. A lot of people think the cold card is too difficult to use, but it's actually quite easy and the nice thing is you can use it in a very beginner friendly manner and then you can also use it in much more advanced uh, advanced setups. If you're enjoying this video so far just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video and share this video with a friend or family member. Now whenever I make a video like this someone tells me how they're going to be setting up a Bitcoin air gapped computer to store their Bitcoin private keys. I'm gonna put a link to this. This is airgapcomputer.com, and it contains a list of reasons why this is a bad idea. As it says here, you will almost certainly screw, screw yourself out of your Bitcoin user hardware wallet instead. Computers, including Raspberry Pi and other single board Linux computers, were not designed to hold secrets. Here's just a short list of attacks. So you can go through this. I'll put a link in the description notes below. And unless you're aware of all these different things that can go wrong, you really shouldn't be doing this unless you're technically extremely advanced. And even in that case, there are many ways to mess it up. For example, this example of data ex exfiltration from speakerless air gap computers via covert hard drive noise. There are all these ways to leak data that you may never think about. This method talks about, says our method is unique in that unlike other acoustic covert channels, it doesn't require the presence of speakers or audio hardware in the air gap computer. A malware installed on a compromised machine can generate acoustic emissions at specific audio frequencies 
by controlling the movements of the HDD's actuator arm. Digital information can be modulated over the acoustic signals and then picked up by a nearby receiver, smartphone, smartwatch, laptop, etc. So this is one way that your seed or private keys could be exfiltrated from a general purpose computer. Here's another example. Academics turn RAM into Wi-Fi cards to steal data from air-gapped systems. These are even air-gapped systems. Academics from an Israeli university have published new research today detailing a technique to convert a RAM card into an impromptu wireless emitter and transmit sensitive data from inside a non-networked air-gapped computer. This remains a, an a, a academic example of this, but you can be sure if academics are doing it, then the real hackers are doing it as well. Here's another example from that list. New acoustic attack steals data from keystrokes with 95% accuracy. A team of researchers from British universities has trained a deep learning model that can steal data from keyboard keystrokes recorded using a microphone with an accuracy of 95%. And you can expect that accuracy to go up over time. So if you wanna be super paranoid like me, don't even let a microphone from your computer or smartphone or heaven forbid, you shouldn't even have these in your house, some Alexa or Siri or other big tech spy devices, but don't let a microphone from your computer or smartphone in the same room when you're clicking the keys of your cold card hardware wallet. It's obviously very different from a keyboard, a general purpose computer uh, keyboard, but there's if you wanna be super paranoid, that's one thing you can do. So in conclusion, I would say Bitcoin only hardware wallets like the cold card or Jade are really the best solution for most people for cold storage. Never ever use a general computer like a laptop or a Raspberry Pi for Bitcoin cold storage. Hardware wallets are designed to have much, much smaller attack surfaces containing only those hardware components and that firmware that are absolutely necessary for Bitcoin private key storage and management, whereas a general purpose computer can be used for many, many more things, so it has a much wider attack service surface. Also, only use companies that make hardware wallets and hardware wallets that are Bitcoin only. The problem is if you use a hardware wallet that supports other cryptos in addition to Bitcoin, that hardware wallet will have a much wider attack surface because they have to put a lot more stuff into it to deal with other cryptocurrencies, for example, especially ones uh, like with like Solana or, or Ethereum that have smart contracts, and this opens it up to even wider, wider attacks as we've talked about in other in other videos. This is one of the, the major problems with cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, for example. So if you use a hardware wallet that supports other cryptos like Ethereum, for example, in addition to Bitcoin, that hardware wallet will have a much wider attack surface. And also by patronizing one of these companies that offer support for scammy cryptocurrencies, you're helping to encourage and prop up the scammy crypto space and delay the Bitcoin revolution. So stick to Bitcoin only hardware wallets, stick to air gapped hardware wallets if you can, that Jade can be used, the Blockstream Jade can be used with QR codes. Uh, and then of course, if you're using the cold card, using it mic with micro SD cards is a great way to transfer data back and forth between your computer and the hardware wallet, thereby keeping your seed and your private keys in this air gapped isolated position on the hardware wallet. Don't use Tangem, that's one I always get lots of questions about. They support lots of other crypto. Don't use Ledger, really stick to Bitcoin only products like the cold card and the Blockstream Jade. If you wanna read more about how Ledger Live in the past was tracking and sending all user information to outsource data and harvesting services, this is one reason I would never trust Ledger again. And if you want a little bit more hand-holding, it's very easy to set up a cold card. It's very easy to set up a Blockstream Jade hardware wallet. But if you want a little more hand hand holding. I've updated my course and I have a number of lectures on this as well as the recorded live classes. For example, this one I did in January of this year in which I went over single SIG, passphrases, multi-SIG exports, doing recoveries on hardware wallets and many other advanced skills that you'll want to learn at some point as you become a more advanced Bitcoiner. So I'll put a link to that in the description notes below in case anyone's interested. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.